<laughs> All right. Thank you. Welcome uh, to my presentation, Improving Takeover Quality in Automated Driving by in Interrupting the Non-Driving Task. Um, for those of you who don't know um, why takeover is such a big issue, um, these are the five levels of automated driving. I removed the zero level, which is no automated, nothing at all. Um, and particularly in level two and three, um, we'll see that the idea of a takeover comes into play. What do we mean by takeover? Takeover means the car is doing an automated task, is driving by itself, um, either in a partial situation or in a conditional situation. Um, and at some point in time, the car realizes that it can no longer um, drive automated, and the driver has to take over. Um, this is what this should look like. Um, you sit in your car, you watch out, um, you look out the, the screen, you observe the traffic, but the car is still doing the driving. Um, please note that this is an old picture because she has the hands on, on her thighs. Um, I think the newest version of Tesla isn't allowing you to do that. You actually have to put some weight on the wheel um, during that, so actually to uh, increase the um, the speed and the quality of the takeover symbol. However, um, we are humans, and right. So the conference is about half human, half uh, intelligent driving, or at least this section. Um, this is what actually happens. I ex please excuse the bad uh, quality of the images. It's the best that I could find on the internet. Um, this is what people are actually doing when they are in automated driving. Right, sleeping. Um, here's another one, really bad, and the ir irony behind those images is, think about what the person has done that actually snapped the photo. Right? They were also not paying attention to what they were doing because they were so um, fascinated by this. And obviously, this is, this is not 75 miles on the highway or 65 miles on the highway. These are in slow-moving traffic, but still, um, this is not what you should do. And how do you guess the people would actually um, circumvent the requirement that you have to touch the wheel. They put oranges, they stuff oranges left and right into the wheel, um, which adds enough pressure on the wheel and um, they can do whatever they want. You can have their smartphone in your hand without actually touching the wheel. Obviously, this is not a good situation and there has been quite a lot of research on the takeover request and I think in the follow presentation, we also hear something about that. The question is, how do we represent the takeover in itself? Do we have a multimodal um, takeover request that means sound, haptic feedback, visual feedback? How often do we ask the driver to take over? Only when it's actually necessary um, or in between as well, and the, the quality of how the takeover um, request is actually presented. So um, this is actually the whole picture. Um, you have the takeover request that comes from the automated driving um, and the interesting thing is over here, this takeover request, regardless how well we are doing this, we'll always have some takeover costs and these takeover costs are um, presented in two ways. One is the performance of the takeover request or the performance of the driving and the other one is the awareness of the driver after the takeover, right? Um, if you're playing um, a really, really um, ex exciting battle on Fortnite on your smartphone, you may not realize what's going on on, on the street around you. So this is sort of the, the central questions. And right, we only do the automatic driving to actually do a non-driving task. That's the fundamental goal to do that, right? And the question is, um, how does the um, takeover request actually also affect the non-driving task? Um, so when we started in doing this, um, looking into the, the whole idea of takeover requests, um, there was one thing, and it's partly from other research that we've done, is um, this is what we call a very old device. It's a vigilance control, right? It controls for a train driver in the sentence, uh, is he still paying attention, is he... Uh, vigilant, and this is a pedal on the on the floor, and he has to press this pedal repeatedly 
to actually um, avoid the train to stop. Right? Similar scenario, different setup, but the question that we had is, okay, can we do anything? Um, can we sort of transfer this idea into um, the automated um, driving scenario? And the question that we looked at is, what happens if we actually interrupt the uh, non-driving task in a very regular pattern? What we did in our experiment, in our study, we interrupted the non-driving task every 30 seconds. Um, and the idea was, okay, will these interruptions help anything regardless, uh, uh, anything with regard to the takeover request? But also, um, what happens if we interrupt the secondary task? How will this affect the performance um, of the secondary task? We looked at um, three criteria. The first one is the reaction time. How quickly did people react? Um, to the takeover request. Second one is the situation awareness. How aware are the uh, drivers after the takeover request? And the third one is the task performance of the, non, of the secondary task, of the non-driving task. So how do we do this? Um, what was our method? We uh, used a um, driving lab. Um, this is what it looks like. You see there is um, very common uh, driving seat. We had a Mercedes-Benz um, cockpit and we used OpenDS um, to um, display the road and it was a very common scenario for highly automated driving. It's highway driving, not in the city, just on a highway. Um, the idea was that um, 75 miles, it's a little bit too speedy for California, but in Germany that's perfectly fine. Um, and each participant, after, after about four minutes into the um, round, they would uh, be asked for a takeover request. Um, the takeover request was um, structured in the following way. Um, there was an obstacle, a car in front of us, and this car would move to the side, and then we would actually see that there's a construction site behind that. And the task that they had to perform at that point in time was actually switching lanes to the lane next to it. Um, the, we integrated the secondary task in a 9-inch Android tablet. That's what you can see right here. It's a tablet right there. Um, and we used two tasks. Um, the first task is um, the participants were watching a movie. Um, and the, so we categorized that as a low cognitive task, right? Just watching a movie, nothing really happens. Um, and the second task was uh, a little bit more cognitive demanding. It's called a little man test, and I don't know whether you can see this in the back, but you see a little man and he holds the suitcase either in the left hand or in the right hand. And this image is rotating every time, right? And you have to sort of figure out in which hand um, does the little man hold the suitcase, and then you have to essentially press left and right. All right. Um, we had the interruption of both of these tasks the following way. The first one is that we present the actual front view, what's going on right in front of the car, um, as an interruption for three seconds, or um, sort of in the um, less verbose, verbose way, just a blank screen. Right? Just a blank screen for three seconds, and then everything would resume um, as normal. We um, applied these conditions to um, 53 participants. 12 of them were female. Um, we had um, an average of 22.5 years of age. That will tell you that we use students um, as our subjects. Um, 4.5 of them have a driver's license a lot of them had a driver's license. Those people who had a driver's license already had them for 4.5 years. And um, we compensated each participant with snacks. Um, 26 of those participants were in the movie condition. This is the one on the top. And uh, 27 participants um, participated in a little man task um, because we wanted to have those two tasks separated. 
regardless of the task, um, everyone was driving um, for a baseline task, which just means driving around a, a complete round without uh, any interruptions. Then we would have the interruptions with um, blank screen and the interruptions with the driving scene in front of it. And this was a counterbalanced design, so we would switch those um, um, on a random basis. What did we measure? We measured the driving performance, the situational awareness, the task performance, and the, ta and the task performance in two ways. First, we wanted to understand what's the error rate, and the second one is what's the subjective load, and we used a NASA TLX test for that. All right, um, what are the results? Um, reaction time, we remember we had the two conditions, the movie and the little man task. Um, we find that the scene task, which is actually showing what's going on in front of it, um, performs better than the blank task and also performs better than the baseline task. But um, for instance, the blank, blank task does not perform any better than um, the movie task. For the little man, um, we find no significant differences at all. Um, so our first um, um, result for that is it really makes a difference whether you present a task in chunks um, or a task in whole, as a whole, and I'll come to that in a second what that means. The situation awareness, this is just um, essentially a control um, variable that we included to understand um, whether we were on the right track. Um, obviously the scene, that means displaying the, the actual driving situation front as a, as a as the um, interruption outperforms the black screen and also the baseline. There's already research that says that this should be the result. Um, and again, sort of the idea that should stick in uh, for, for the later discussion is the interruptions, if we do an, any interruption, should be meaningful. Right? In this sense, they actually show you what's going on on the street. A little bit more interesting um, is on, a, on the side of the task performance. Um, interesting, on the error side, we don't find um, a lot of differences between the, um, the movie or the little man. However, and this is sort of to solidify the idea of task versus in chunks versus task in whole, um, for the movie, there is a significant, diff significant difference between questions that relate to the movie before the interruption and uh, questions that relate to the movie after the interruption. Um, for the, the load, the subject, how much cognitive load was associated with, the, um, with the, each of the tasks, we see that um, for the movie scenario, um, there is actually higher load in the interruptions. And for the little man, there is actually lower load for the interruptions. Um, what does that mean in all? So we think um, three, um, three basic um, findings that we have. First is the task that you have, that you do as the secondary task is a very important influence on how you um, will be able to have a qualitative takeover. Um, the idea behind that is that if you have the task in chunks, which is the little man, you solve a repeated set of puzzles, um, it doesn't really matter whether you interrupt this, right? You see the puzzle, there's an interruption screen, you go back to the puzzle or you complete the next puzzle. Um, so whenever you do something that's um, potentially while driving, then it should be interruptible, right? Not sleeping, sleeping is not interruptible. Um, and the second thing that we think is, if you interrupt, don't interrupt just with a blank screen. The blank screen has a very much potential of just confusing the user, what's going on, what's happening here. Um, provide some meaningful interruptions on that, like the driving scene in front of it. And obviously this is a, um, a very time sensitive matter, right? Or we just move the driving up to level five and then this problem will no longer exist. Thank you very much. I stuck the time. So uh, we have time for questions. So what we'll do is, I think we only have one mic. So I will have the speaker keep the mic. So if you have a question, uh, say your name and your affiliation.
um, actually then the speaker need to repeat uh, that and also the uh, the question so that we can get that capture. Okay, so questions. Thank you. Any questions? Please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the question was about when did we do the NASA TLX testing. Um, we had three, condi three conditions, baseline, blank screen, and the movie screen. And after each condition, we did the NASA TLX test. Um, there was some time in between because we had to sort of um, go back to the second round. So it's sort of directly after that. We know that sort of the TLX test is subjective measure. If you have sort of a lot of time in between, then this sort of gets diluted. So that's why we wanted to have it after each condition. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like some viral smuggling stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So you were talking about this past week time, like the uh, location thing. Yep. Uh, was the presentation of the interruption always just random within this time? So did you consider uh, the time then, for example, between the construct parts or so? Or did you see an evaluation of which progress the certain subparts was at the stage of the construction? No, not in this one. Um, since the, the, um, the way that... The way that it was designed is essentially um, you had the task, sort of the little man, for instance, you would have it on the screen, and then it would just blank out or it would um, overlay the driving scene. Um, and as soon as this was away for th after three seconds, um, it would just represent this, this, the next the screen back. You had one takeover. Yeah, one takeover, yeah. And the takeover was about four minutes. In. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.